Hello everyone, welcome back to another video. So in today's video, I'm going to give you some top reasons why becoming an MRI tech is not for you. My name is Marion. Just keep in mind these top tips or these tips is not to discourage you. It's just to let you know, give you an idea of what to expect after you have gotten out of your MRI program and start working in the field. I do have more videos probably touching on this under my MRI uh, playlist. If you just click on playlist and then you can go to a lot of different videos I have um, because I just don't want to forget anything. And I may have mentioned something that I may forget in another video. So some of the reasons why becoming an MRI tech may not be for you is if you are one of those ones who do not take call or do not like to take call. So in MRI, depending on where you work at, mainly at a hospital, I've worked at um, imaging clinics because I also travel as a tech in radiology. And I have not heard of any imaging clinics making an MRI tech take call. But this also depends on what state you live in. I'm not sure if the imaging clinics you work at um, make text take call or not, but the outpatient imaging clinics I work at in my state do not make any text take call. So at a hospital, a lot of times you will have to take call, especially if you work at a hospital that is not having their MRI department open up 24-7, even though the actual hospital and the ER department is open up 24-7. Some MRI departments, they close down like at seven or 11 and then they just have a tech be on call if they don't have a night shift tech if it's not in their budget to have a night shift tech because maybe they don't have a lot of numbers to justify why they need someone to work night shift so that would probably be a deal breaker for you if you have kids or if you like to travel on the weekends or if you are one of those ones who just like to do what you are hired for and do not want to do anything extra as far as taking call because a lot of hospitals do require you to take call. So whenever you do have to take call, they may say, hey, we need you to take call this full week. And you probably would do it every five weeks, every six weeks, every three months or something. Or you may have a facility that want a tech to take call once or twice a week. So it's up to you if you can do that or not. If you do decide to take call, you do get a lot more money um, if you are called in. You don't get a lot of money just as a tech, but I'm just saying if you are called in, um, you may get time and a half. You may get night shift uh, differential if you come in on a night shift and have to take call. Um, you may get money just for holding a pager. Sometimes that could be $3 an hour, $5 an hour, depending on where you work at. Another reason why um, working at MRI may not be for you is you always have to double check your patients. So with x-ray, um, CT, nuclear medicine, um, mammography, things like that, you really don't have to worry about what a patient has in their pockets or have on them or in their ears as far as like AirPods or hearing aids, unless you are imaging that body part. So say for instance, if someone come in CT or or um, come in for a mammogram and they have, well, let's start with CT. If someone come in for a CT scan of their head and they have on a belt buckle and things in their pocket, they don't have to take it out because you're just x-raying their head. Or if a patient come in for a mammogram and they have their phone in their pocket and their credit cards, we're only taking images of their breasts so they don't have to remove their pants. With MRI, you have to change your patients. I know there may be times where you may work with a tech, you may train with a tech. If they're scanning a brain, they let the patient leave on their pants or their shorts or whatever. You're supposed to change all of your patients into a hospital gown or a hospital scrub or a clinic scrub, whatever your clinic provides, because you get caught up in going fast just to get your patient in and out the table. But if something was to happen where um, 
where someone get injured, where someone left something in their pockets and they got burned, then you can either be sued for that. You can lose your job. You can lose your license. Uh, it all depends on how that company wants to proceed with the situation and especially how injured that patient was in trying to, you know, take legal actions, you know, of course. So just keep that in mind with MRI. You have to pretty much act like a spy and pat everyone down because you don't want anyone leaving anything on them and getting injured. So another reason why you may not want to work in MRI is because a lot of times you have to work by yourself. There are some times where people may not like working by themselves. I love to work by myself because um, it's less work for me pretty much. Don't get me wrong. I love working in a team too, but um, sometimes, you know, someone get distracted and, you know, a lot of talking has been involved, you know, just small talk. And whenever I work by myself, it's easier for me to focus. It's easier for me to, you know, do the job without having to double work sometimes. So if you are one of those ones who do not like working by yourself, MRI is not going to be for you. Because a lot of outpatient imaging clinics where I have worked and hospitals, you work by yourself. Now, if you are at one of these outpatient imaging clinics or hospitals, sometimes there may be a time where you may have a tech with you the entire shift. Uh, and then keep in mind when I'm telling you these things, it also depends on what state you live at, their protocols and regulations, um, what what they what their job requires. But I'm just telling you from my experience, a lot of jobs that I've worked at, especially outpatient imaging clinics, they only have one tech on the shift because it's like one machine, so one tech. But there are hospitals that I have gone to who have two techs. Now, sometimes they may not have two techs the whole shift. They may have someone do, like, let's just say, if if there is a schedule from 7 to 3, 3 to 11, they may have the 7 to 3 tech work 7 to 1, 7 to 2 by themselves. And then the 3 to 11 tech come in at 2 or 2.30, you know, to um, get get the report or kind of like overlapping. Because there have been places where I've worked at where I've worked with a tech because we're overlapping shifts. I'm probably getting ready to get off in an hour or two. So they come in and they help out. So um, just keep that in mind. Sometimes when you do work by yourself, especially in a hospital setting, there may be um, someone who probably can't bring down your patients at the time, such as a transporter. If they're backed up and you don't have a designated radiology transporter, they may be on the floor getting another patient to go to dialysis or the ER. So if this is a deal breaker for you, um, just read consider it. Um, I'm just giving you all the tips because I know there are times where in the hospital, we have to move a lot of patients over and you may have to put them on the sliding board. If you're in an outpatient imaging clinic, you may have a patient come in in a wheelchair. A lot of outpatient imaging clinics are walkie talkies, but you may get a situation where someone is coming from the nursing home or someone is coming from their home, but they just may be in a wheelchair with the pad on them. Now you have to lift them up or get a manual lift. So um, that's something to think about. Another thing um, with MRI that may not be for you is um, pacemakers and stimulators. If you are one of those ones who have pain from, let's just say, x-ray, CT, and you're not used to looking up implants or scanning implants, worrying about them, you will have to do that a lot in MRI. You have to research your implants um, just to make sure that it's MRI conditional, meaning that it can go inside of the room and be scanned under certain conditions. So um, even if it does say MRI conditional on their card, it doesn't stop there. You have to research, okay, um, am I using the machine for this patient for their um, stimulator or pacemaker? Am I using the correct cause that their stimulator calls for? Um, even though their pacemaker say 
MRI um, conditional. Is this the type of the machine that we can scan them on? Another reason why you may not want to work at MRI is if you have to start IV. We give contrast a lot in MRI, so you do have to start an IV. Um, sometimes you work at a place where you have another tech, um, a tech aide, one of those patient care techs or nurses or even someone in a hospital who could probably help you start an IV. But if everyone is busy, then you either have to wait or you have to try it. And sometimes that can get you very behind on your schedule. Um, if a patient comes late, that can get you very behind on your schedule. If um, a patient is claustrophobic, that can get you behind on your schedule. So if you are one of those ones who do not have a lot of patients, um, you get frustrated easily, um, you do not you do not know how to work well under pressure. MRI is not for you because there are times where I probably have at least at least two or three patients each day on my schedule who is claustrophobic. They need um, Ativan or anxiety medicine like Xanax or something to help them get through the scan. Some patients even have to go under sedation to have the MRI scan. So if you're one of those ones who, if someone pressed the call button because they're freaking out um, and you're getting anxious and like, why are they not um, holding still? Then it's not going to be for you because you have to talk to your patients a lot, especially if they're claustrophobic. If your patient moves and don't hold perfectly still, you have to keep repeating the pictures unless this patient is just severely altered, um, is pretty much life or death for this patient. They're trying to take the patient to surgery or they're trying to rule out a stroke and you're talking to the doctor or the radiologist and you're like, I've been repeating these images. I've been telling the patient to hold still. They're altered. They can't. What do you want me to do with the images? A lot of times that doctor for that patient will want you to submit those images uh, just to have something, have a baseline of how this patient is doing. But keep in mind, you should also relate to the doctor and the nurse or one or the other that, hey, this patient is moving a lot on the scan. Um, I can turn it in if you want me to. However, the images may not be diagnostic material. So the radiologist may put in their report a lot of motion, limited study, or they may put in their report the patient need to come back down and get scanned, possibly under sedation. So that's a lot to think about um, if you are starting MRI school or wanting to become an MRI tech. Um, another thing that's like book work material, um, I would say is hard, but I would say you do have to study because the physics is a different form of physics. It's not like x-ray physics because MRI does not use any form of radiation. It's not like CT physics. It's like night and day. So some people cannot um, grasp the physics portion. So that discourages them. But when it comes to book work, I say just study the material that your teacher is giving you. I'm suggesting that you review. I also have registry review um, things on my page as well. If you click on playlists and um, I would just say just study and study until you understand the topic or the material that you have to understand for the physics part. But other than that, I think I covered a lot of the important things um, that I should cover. But if I didn't, I would probably just try to um, attach subtitles in the video or little notes or maybe um, put something in the description box. If I forget something, if you all can just um, let me know um, if you are like an MRI tech right now, if you are a new MRI tech, if you're a student, if you're probably just thinking about becoming an MRI tech. If you found this video to be helpful, please give it a thumbs up. 
And hopefully that you all make the right decision. I just don't want you to get into MRI. And then this is something that you absolutely cannot do. As far as me, um, I do work in like five different areas in radiology. I first started in x-ray and then I started in CT. And then whenever I was working in CT, MRI and CT test, they pretty much work close together back to back. So I was like, oh, the anatomy looked very similar to what I'm learning in CT. Um, I want to just, you know, do MRI as well. So I didn't know that MRI text took call. So that was one of those things where I just couldn't do. So a lot of my shifts or jobs that I had to work had to be in the outpatient imaging clinic because they didn't require any text to take call. So um, if you do or if you are one of those ones who don't like to take call or can't take call, that will also determine what jobs you want. Just because you can't take call doesn't mean don't sign up for the MRI program. Sign up for the MRI program because some jobs may not require you to take it. They may just say, hey, um, it's a suggestion or if you want to take it, you can or you may land a job at an imaging clinic where you just absolutely don't have to take call. But other than that, um, that's it for this video. I hope I gave you enough information. But if you have any questions for me, um, you can leave them in the comment box. But um, I will see you all in the next video. Bye!